Hey everybody and welcome into the NJCAA Network and JUCO Cover 3 where we break down the top junior college football matchups and storylines of the week. I'm Zach McKinstry. Alongside me is Alan Edward, Director of Recruiting at JUCO Football Frenzy, a former JUCO baller himself. Alan, appreciate you being with us. Oh, most definitely. Appreciate you having me, Zach. Oh yeah, and, and a great place to start with you on with your uh, former school, Independence, playing Trinity Valley this weekend, the number six team in the country, and probably the most exciting matchup of the weekend, went to overtime, down to the wire, and Independence put up a really good fight as an unranked team. What did you like out of that game? Oh, for sure. Um, when I was watching the game, man, um, I start with Trinity Valley. Trinity Valley, they always had some dogs, you know, coming out of there. Um, you know, me being here in San Antonio. And when I used to live in Austin, I used to always catch up with their games and stuff like that. So Trinity Valley always had, like, athletes and dogs. But what stood out to me was their quarterback, Diego. Diego was actually from the Austin area, so I kind of – he was a UTSA commit before too. So I kind of knew about him a little bit and I knew he was a, a gunslinger. And watching that game, man, um, Independence, they, they did their thing. Um, they held up uh, until down to the wire. I saw that go route, they, they threw up. I feel like it could have been a better call play, but um, they fought to the, to, to the end, you know, and I couldn't be more proud of them. You know, I got some guys that still coaches there. I got Chance Main, who was a former team of mine that went to Texas State. He's not a D-line coach there now. So, I mean, Independence showed a good fight. Both teams played great. You know, that's the best way to even start a season that way, you know, going to OT. So, I mean, shout out to both teams, to be honest. Yeah, I couldn't ask for a better start to the season. You talk about that go route. On, on fourth and 17, there aren't too many plays yeah. you can draw up there. <laughs> Uh, but I was impressed with uh, Tr Trinity or Trinity Valley turned it over five times. Independence's defense looked really good. And then the Cardinals backup came in late there and kind of led them to that victory, getting that field goal on the final drive and then scoring in overtime. But a uh, lot to like about Independence. Both of those teams are on our ESPN Plus game of the week this year. Um, but a lot to like about both teams for sure. Oh, yeah. Both teams, like I said, they, they're going to play to the fullest. Um... And I love the, you know, Texas and Kansas type of, you know, play. I think we need more of that now instead of having, you know, most schools, you know, play, you know, I just believe it's still start spreading out some more, you know, like Texas playing some, you know, Kansas Juco's, Mississippi playing some Texas Juco's. I think, you know, make Juco a little more interesting, you know, maybe money may be involved in that, but I think, you know, as Juco starts to grow, I think we should see more of that for sure. And competition early in the season is great for players, coaches, and for us as fans, which is a great segue to what we got coming up this week. Thursday, our ESPN Plus game of the week, New Mexico Military at Hutchinson. Two teams that have national championships in their arsenal and two teams that we're really excited about moving forward. So what do you expect from that game and what are your thoughts going in on Thursday? Man, first and foremost, I believe that's going to be a high-scoring game. I'm looking at probably... 50 to like you know 40 something but uh I like you know if, if I had to pick I'll go with Hutch for sure you know because I played against Hutch when I was in Juco um but man New Mexico I know the head coach left he went somewhere I can't remember but um they kept that program winning ever since uh Jordan Tamayamu went there man they've been they've been winning ever since every year they have a quarterback that could spin it their defense they always had like dbs that can play and just run to the ball when i remembered but hutch man i think hutch got it you know they could sling the ball their defense is always tough and mean and you know they just remind me of the sec and they um kansas jayhawk and juco era so i believe hutchison man they, they might give them a good game but i expect a high scoring game for that one for sure Absolutely. I know the Blue Dragons averaged 225 yards on the ground last year per game. Uh, just unbelievable on the ground. And then New Mexico bringing in a coach that's very defensive-minded in Oliver Sukup. Talked with him earlier today. Defensive-minded guy from New Mexico State where he played there as a D lineman, coached the linebackers there for a long time. So it's going to be a lot of fun to watch for sure. Uh, let's move into the rankings. We have preseason rankings. You got to kind of take them with a grain of salt because you never really know in junior college football until you see the teams on the field. Uh, what were your yeah. thoughts on the early season rankings? Um, I saw it. I think it was based off the the records last year and obviously by the points they scored. Um, you know, I kind of agree with it a little bit. Obviously, we had what, Iowa Western at one. Um, who was that to? 
had East Mississippi at two. East Mississippi, that's fair. Three, O was Hutch. You know, they they some dogs. They all great athletes. And those rankings was pretty fair, I believe. Um, you didn't agree with it? You had something that was, like, kind of off for you? I, you know, I like it. I like it's Kilgore at four. It's Snow College at five. Trinity Valley at six. So, again, similar to that playoff push last year, you have the the Texas teams that are right outside looking in. Kilgore's a toss-up. Uh, they were the final team in in the semifinal last year, leaving Snow out. And a lot of people last year could have made the argument that Snow should have been that fourth team in. Oh, of course. So... Oh, that will play itself out, and we'll find out this year for sure. Yeah, but um, like I said, maybe it's just the uh, the toughness of the schedule. I think that played a main part of it, obviously. Um, I mean, every juco around the world from Texas, Cali, you know, and um, Kansas, they all tough, but I think they, they just based it off schedule, tough schedule, you know, and I think that's why Hutch ended up jumping them, even though they won that natty. Oh, yeah, and we haven't seen a Texas team in the national championship in a little bit, but the championship moving to West Texas A&M in Canyon, Texas this year. So maybe this is the year we see someone out of that Southwest Junior College Football Conference. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. I mean, it's, it's right there for them. So, yeah, somebody in Texas for sure got to make it. Um, I believe in them. Like I said, they play some good football here. and te- um, Football is big here in Texas, so I expect to see one of them in there for sure. It's going to be a lot of fun finding out as we indulge into this season. Alan, thanks for joining us on this week's Cover 3, and we will be back here next week breaking down this week's game. Yes, sir. Appreciate you for having me, Zach.